Glory to God. Everyone, blessings to you. Greetings to you as you're joining in. Share this broadcast. Invite your followers. And say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. Now, I want to continue. I always do broadcasts on the woman of God. But the father inspired me and told me to do a wisdom broadcast for the men of God. And I'm going to be on here for a couple minutes, but just hear what I'm saying. I am a man of God. So what I'm telling you is going to be powerful information. It's really going to bless you. As a man of God, you want to have people that are hungry for God around you. They want the Holy Spirit. They're hungry for his voice, his will, his presence, his conviction. The Lord was ministering to me about Gideon. Remember, it was Gideon that heard God begin to tell him, I'm going to bring you out with all the army that you have. And at the end of the day, Gideon went from all these people in the army to only having 300 people because he's a man of God. The Lord has to direct Gideon because Gideon has a whole mob of people with him. But their heart not right. As a man of God, remember. Because we was created to love. While you're operating in love, it can make you blind to whose heart is not for you. Love can create blind spots where you can't see the danger that people carry in their heart towards you. We see that Gideon does not know these people. He thinks that they're soldiers, that they're fighting the battle, but God sees them differently than Gideon. And he's a man of God. There's another story in the Bible where Joshua is a king. And Joshua, while he's a king, he goes out and fight the battle and loses the battle. And he's crying out to God. Why did I lose the battle? Why did I lose the battle? And God says, do you know that Akon, somebody that you trusted, do you know that he's dangerous? that he disobeyed me. Now, saints, do you understand that Joshua, the king, was shocked that that was the reason why he lost? He thought that he lost because he didn't have enough strength or he didn't have enough men or he didn't have enough strategy or he didn't have enough wisdom or he didn't have enough weapons or he didn't have enough uh, guards and shields and and and. He didn't escape good enough. But God tells him, no, you did not lose because of that. You lost because you have people with the right, wrong heart around you. As a man of God, survey people that you connect with and see if they fear God. See if they tremble before him because you're not a man of God just because of a title. You're a man of God because you're of God. You're made up of his mind, his substance, his thought system, his signals, his communication. You're a man of God because you're not just a man. God has control over your your headquarters, your mentality. 
That's what makes you a man of God. Joshua was shocked. He had to burn Achan, his wife, their children, their whole lineage. What's going on here? Joshua has to destroy what wrong company was creating, his own defeat. As a man of God, you have to watch the hearts of people. Understand a man of God will only be your friend if you love his God. If you turn against the Holy Spirit, that man of God cannot be friends with you. That man of God cannot have freedom to love on you. That man of God can only commit loyalty to you if you're loyal to his God. Joshua had to destroy and betray Achan because Achan betrayed his God. Listen to me, people of God. Gideon had to betray all those people because they was betraying his God. Their heart was not right. When you're a man of God, the Holy Spirit will have you walk away from many people because their heart is not right. For people, man of God, look for people that tremble before God. Look for people that fear the presence of God, that they reverence him. Look for people that when they are around authority, they have the spirit of excellence. They can represent you or represent God correctly. Get people around you that you don't have to worry about what they're saying behind your back. Man of God, as you're watching this video, don't permit people to disrespect you. Don't permit them to disrespect you. Even if it's your children, don't permit people to disrespect you. Don't permit them to disrespect you. Let people that disrespect you be on the outside. Don't let them be on the inside. Don't live with people that disrespect you. Man of God, you have to know why would God call Abraham apart from his father's house? Because his father's house would disrespect where he was going with God. Jesus told the disciples, if you go to a house as a man of God and they don't receive you, dust your feet off. Don't let people in your inner court disrespect you. And anybody that don't want to submit to your order is okay for you to take your hand off of them. You don't have to force anybody to listen to you. If they don't want to listen to you, you let them go. Let them find out the hard way that God sent them to you to help them. There's a hard headedness that has gone on as years go forward and the generations go forward where people are becoming more ill will to authority. The disrespect is so strong. So strong. I watch CNN news and the news question President Trump on how he has authority over America. I watch people, reporters, pr question the president of the nation of how he has authority over the nation. I watch that with my own eyes and I watch the reporters of how stupid are you that you would have to ask if a man that is the president over a nation has authority over the nation. That's why he's a president. But because the time we're in, People hate order. Parents 
are no longer their children's deliverer. Now parents are looking to be friends with their children. Children are doing the same thing that their parents do. If their parent is lawless, they're lawless. Children are raising children. It doesn't matter the age of the parent. The parent has the mind of a child. The parent has a mind of an infant. Because there's such a hatred for order and authority. And people can't submit themselves. They can't submit themselves because of the spirit that's in this age. The spirit of the world is so strong that people, they can't submit themselves. As a man of God, you have to be aware of this time that we're in and don't allow disrespectful people close to you. Don't allow disrespect. Don't allow yourself to be disrespected. Don't hire people that disrespect you. Don't marry a woman that disrespects you. Don't allow children to disrespect you. Don't invest money into people that disrespect you. Don't permit dishonor in your inner courts because they'll kill all of your victories Joshua lost battles because of Achan's disrespect. Moses couldn't go forth because of Korah. They had stirred up the people to disrespect Moses. There's a spirit on the disrespectful. If you study the life of a disrespectful person, they have no peace. They run. They don't want to face life. They hide behind people. They hide behind accusation. They hide behind excuses. Disrespectful people, they run. They are not warriors. They are secretive agents of Satan that are dispatched in certain regions to cause trouble. Never let yourself become the disrespectful. Guard your heart from being disrespectful. Learn from fools and people that disrespect God. Learn from them. People that disrespect God do not become successful. People that disrespect God are not favored. They have no favor. People that disrespect God are filled with legions of demons. They have demons living inside of them. As a man of God, keep yourself in the presence of people that respect the anointing. You don't ever want to find yourself drained because of your company. Because they don't have the right hearts. They don't have the right attitude. They don't have the right intentions and motives. Because it will drain you. Because when you're a man of God, you are spiritual. You're prophetic. You know the hearts of people. You know what they're thinking. You know what they're saying. You, you know what they're doing. Don't allow yourself to be surrounded by people that do not mean you well. Keep them away from the ark, the glory, the presence of the living God. Don't allow them in your atmosphere. As a man of God, you look for people that want change. Don't try to change people. Don't look for people to say, I'll deliver you. Look for people that are serious about deliverance. All throughout the Bible, there was a prophet that married to that harlot and the harlot couldn't stay home. And the prophet went through issue and issue and issue every time he would find that harlot. 
an attempt to bring the harlot into soundness of mind. But it was a spiritual implication that God was given to his people that they are harlots. They don't stay planted in what he taught them. They become stray dogs. They go to and fro the earth just like Satan, losing their way. It was a symbolism of how the relationship with God, God looking for people that will stay rooted and grounded in love and never change. He don't have to worry about their loyalty. He don't have to look, he don't have to worry if they're sincere because their heart is right. As a man of God, you're going to meet many people whose heart not right. You have to know which bracket to pit them in. You got to know which bracket to pit them in. Don't pit them in the bracket of trustworthiness because that's not their functionality. Don't pit them in the bracket of proximity, being close to you because they're going to damage you because you're looking for respect and they're disrespectful. You're looking for honor, they're dishonorable. You're looking for the hungry and they are foolish. Don't allow them to come near you. Man of God, keep your atmosphere filled with only people or a person that fears God at the level you do, that want his accuracy and you'll be safe. See, I'm doing teaching on the man of God because the man of God need to hear this. I do so much teachings on woman. I empower the woman. I tell women that they can do this. I tell women what they can become. I tell women what they can achieve. But now I'm talking to the man of God, God's original plan, the man of God. Before there was a woman on the earth, there was a man called Adam that God created to represent him, to create order, to release instructions, to plant the presence of God on the earth. You notice that Adam comes after God says, let there be light because Adam is God's intent to release the light. Adam is the one that names the animals. Adam is the one that is keeping and tending the garden. Adam is the one that this woman comes out of. And so Adam is everything. The man is the man. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, Woman was made for man and not man for woman. A man wasn't made for you. You was made for a man. Most of the women are like men. If you talk to over 90% of women in our generation, now not everybody, because I know many of women that are not like that. I know many of women that are not like that. And I know that there's many of women in the earth that's not like that. But now women are becoming men in their mentality. Now women are operating as men. I call them butches. I call them bull daggers. They look like a woman, they act like a man. If some women don't have children, you'll think that they're transgenders. And in the day where uh, men are doing surgery to look like women, that if we move the surgery, I think that's accurate. Because many women are men in how they function. They don't know how to be a woman. So if they get around a man, they fumble. They don't know how to be with a man. Because they are a man too. They're a man too. Man of God, you choose a woman, a real woman. When you choose a real woman, you won't have to worry about if things in your life are going to lose favor because she is favor.
She will be favor to you. When a man finds a wife, he finds favor with the Lord. She will be favor to you. Look for the woman that can bring favor to you. Not fire, but favor. You find a woman that brings fire, you're just going to have more troubles. You'll meet women that bring trouble to you. You have to baby them. You have to keep repeating yourself to them. They're little children. They're not ready for relationships. Some young men often go for older women because they're looking for maturity. You ever seen an older woman with a younger man? You may look at it and say, oh, why is he with an older woman? Because the young man is looking for maturity. He's not looking for a little girl. The generation that we have, I don't know who raised the woman, but it wasn't good at all. Women, their role models are Cardi B. And women that are a part of the world, and they're supposed to be in the church. They're supposed to be women of virtue, virtuous women, women of wisdom. And secular women are their inspiration. That's what they look at. These women not in the Bible. Now, I know women that's in the Bible, but most women are not in the Bible. Dear son, if you ever want to consider having a family, just study the woman for about six months. Just study her. And don't tell her that you're studying her. Just study to see what entertains her. Just study. Don't say nothing. Don't tell her that you're studying her. Just watch what her appetite craves. I love a woman that reads the Bible. I love a woman that desires instruction. I love a woman that is trustworthy, a trustworthy woman. They're not two-faced. They're not a gossiper. I love a woman that she's real. You don't have to guess, is this Satan or is this God? Is this light or is this darkness? I love women like that. I applaud women. Proverbs chapter 31 says that the virtuous woman is worthy to be praised. Why is she worthy to be praised? Because she's operating in virtue. You see God in her. Man of God, look for that. If you want a personal assistant, don't just get a woman that you think can assist you. Find a woman that fears God while she is assisting you. Because there's going to be days where her education is not going to able to help her in the battle to assist you. When the devil tells her not to assist you, when the devil start pointing out, oh, he's drinking soda. He's not supposed to drink soda. You don't want to help somebody that's drinking soda. You don't drink soda. When the devil start talking to her and tell her not to help you, she ain't going to be able to lean to her education to help you. She going to fall by the wayside because she don't know spiritual warfare. She don't know spiritual authority. She don't know how to take authority over the devil because she's a natural woman. Natural women do natural things. Natural women don't have solutions. Natural women get defeated. Natural women, they cause trouble. It's spiritual women that dissolve trouble. It's women that are of the spirit that find solutions, that find ways to bring calmness to matters is only the spiritual woman. Look for women that's spiritual. Look for men that's spiritual. Look for sons and daughters that are spiritual. You don't want somebody just to be your son because they sow the most or be your daughter because they give the biggest offerings. Look for those that are spiritual, that the spirit has control over them. So no other spirit can divert them when God is using them in your life. Look for that as a man of God. And take your time. When you rush with people, you never see the real them. Let pressure come. Let battles come. Akon would have never been revealed until there was a battle. I believe at AI or somewhere they had that battle. 
if there was never a battle, Joshua would have never saw Achan. If the king of Xerxes never had given instruction, he would have never saw Vashti. Vashti was going to hide until King Ahasuerus told her an instruction. Man of God, take your time with people. You know how many times I've met people that I wanted to bless them, I wanted to promote them, and God said no. They're not worthy to receive that level of treatment. It's not worthy. They have no fruit for that treatment. Remember what John the Baptist said, bear the fruits of repentance. Bear the fruits that are worthy of repentance. That's what God looks for. He looks for those that are bearing the fruits that are worthy of repentance. Is your fruits worthy of favor? Is it, is it worthy of promotion? Many people don't deserve a necklace. They deserve a dog tag. Do you know as a leader who not to adorn with a necklace? Pit a leash around them. You don't give them diamonds. You give them dog tags. You don't give rubies to a rebel. And you don't give diamonds to a devil. Do you know which son that you're trying to raise up in your ministry and say, this is my Elisha, and that's Haman? Because King Ahasuerus, it took him a minute to discern Haman. Haman was getting all the honor. Remember, King Ahasuerus told everybody, honor Haman, honor. And Mordecai said, no, I ain't doing that. I know who this is. This is the enemy. Remember that? Haman had a position that he was unworthy of. And time revealed it. This broadcast is to really quicken you. Do you really know who people are? Do you know that everybody that God pits in your life is not from God? They're not of God. They are the devil. Do you know who God has picked to be the devil in your life? Some of you all grew up next to the devil. Some of you all, your parents is the devil. Some of you are your children are the devil. Do you know who is the devil in your life? That's the part that they play. You ever wonder why people cannot change? They can't change. They don't see why they should change because they're saying, hey, I'm the devil. There's no reason for me to change because this is what I came for. I came to steal, to kill and destroy. You ever wonder why people don't have any conviction? You ever wonder why the Holy Spirit could be saying something that doesn't bother a person? Because that's their part to play. There are some of you all, you have met people in your life that you tried to lead them down the way of righteousness and it couldn't happen because they are the devil. It don't matter how much wisdom, it don't matter how much anointing, it don't matter how much you pray or fast or how much you intercede or how much you counsel, it ain't gonna work because that's their part to play. The Father has given me wisdom for you. There are some of you are watching me right now. You ever wonder why you found so much heartache in people? Because that's their part to play the devil. That's why you're not getting a good presence from them. You feel Satan because they are Satan. When you're around people that's full of God, you feel God. When you're around people that's full of the devil, you feel the devil. And the more you commit yourself to Jesus, you'll actually feel the devil on people more than anything. You'll feel God on people more than anything because you're more spiritual. So what do you do in moments like that? You let yourself be free. Surround yourself with people that love your God. Not strange men, not strange women. 
when you got to keep on convincing people to do righteousness is because they're not sent for righteousness. If you got to keep on telling people how to talk to you or how to serve you or how to love you or how to be loyal to you is because they're not sent for that. So the joy of disconnection. When you meet a fool, the same way you met the fool is the same way you disconnect from the fool. <laughs> the same way you came in, you go out. Don't live your life around fools. Don't live your life around clowns. Find people that's serious about the father's business. Find people that's serious about surrendering themselves. And you commit yourself to them. You go forward with them. Let the dead bury the dead. And you go running. When, it, when Elijah went to go see Elisha, Elijah, I'm not calling your parents. So don't come tell me about your parents. I don't want to hear about them. I don't want to hear who they is. I don't want to know their background. I don't need to hear them. And guess what? I don't want to know if you got any siblings because I, didn't, I wasn't sent for your siblings. I don't want to know if you got a job. I wasn't sent for your job. I don't want to know if you have plans to go back to school because I wasn't sent for you to go back to school. I, I don't want to hear if you got some clothes on layaway because I wasn't sent for your clothes on layaway. Come on. And God picked Elisha because he was hungry. Start picking the hungry. That's what you do as a man of God. Find the hungry. Find the hungry. Look for those that are hungry and give them the crown. Give them the position. Don't have people in your camp that are sissies. Don't have people in your camp that are cowards. They're good for nothing. You can't get nothing out of them because they're nothing. You're not ever going to see anything come forth from them because they ain't got nothing. The cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, you put them in the cereal box. And you give the milk of the word to those that are hungry to grow. Remember it said by the milk you grow thereby. You give the milk of the word for those that are hungry. The milk of the word is for those that are thirsty to grow. You don't give it to people that are nobodies. In this life, man of God, you're going to realize that you can't spend your time trying to make somebody somebody. If they're not nobody, they're going to be nobody. That's what they are assigned to do, to be a nobody. Find people that are truly hungry for God. I'm going to do more teachings on the man of God because men of God need, they need counselors. They need support. Men of God carry a greater assignment than women. A woman is a weaker vessel. God has never and never will pit a lot on a woman because that wasn't her task. Her task was to help 
who God put a lot on. I'm going to do more broadcasts on the man of God because men of God need to know why things happen in their life. Do you know why your life is in the state that is in most times? Because there's a wrong person that God don't want you to remain connected to. Do you know the disrespectful, the disobedient in your life? When you discern them, you detect them, you identify them, you have the advantage now to know where your battles can be lost through them. Your acons. Last but not least, the word of God said this. God told in Judges 7, 4, he says, there are still too many men. Take the men down to the water and I will test them for you there. God said, I'm going to test all these men. I'm falling in love with this text now. Remember I told you test people before you bless people, man of God? See, it's in the word. You see what God told Gideon? Take all these people and let me test them for you. Let me show them to you that they're not fit for the royalty that you are, for the position that you're in, for the assignment that I've given to you. They are not legit for that. And look what it says. He says, there I will tell you who shall go with you. And I shall also tell you who will not go with you. So God saw, as a man of God, I need to protect you. You got people here, you don't know who they are. I know who they are. I know that they the devil. That's why they're so troublesome. That's why they're so dumb. That's why you have so much issues with them, because they have another spirit. There are some of you men on here. If you have, if you have a, a wife that's disrespecting you, if give her a chance to, to learn right, but get a divorce. Like cut her off, like all the way off. Now, don't pursue a future with a stupid woman. There are virtuous women that's not like a stupid woman. If your woman not bringing you joy, that's not a woman, you with a man. Because every woman knows how to bring joy to a man. Now, if you're not getting no joy, is because you with a man. So you actually in a homosexual relationship. Because there's a man talking to that woman, telling that woman not to be a woman. So get a divorce. Look what it says right here. I will tell you who to have with you. And who not to have with you. Look what it says right there. Separate those who lap the water with their tongues, their mouth, their hands to mouth like dogs from those that kneel down to drink. Look what God say. Separate those that act like dogs from those that who drink the water like dogs to those that kneel down and drink. You separate them. Look what God is saying. I'm going to show you who's really a part of your team. 
And who's just there for image? They just want to be seen with you. See, these people wanted to be seen with Gideon. They wanted to be a part of something big. They was not with Gideon. They wanted to be a part of something that seemed like it was big. God said, those that's acting kneeled down and classy, you get them out of here. Because they're not here because they're hungry and thirsty. They're here because they want to be a part of something that they think is powerful. They want to have attention. They want to be known that they are part of something that seems prosperous. That it seems big. It seems gigantic. Man of God, you're going to have to be aware of those type of people that are just connected to you for their image. They're only your personal assistant because of an image. That's only your spiritual son and daughter because of an image. That's only your wife because of an image. You're not going to get nothing else but an image. That's only your ministry advisor because of an image. It's not real. You're not getting any growth productivity in it. Productivity is just an image. So it's empty. It's nothing there. Nothing. I pray for you, men of God. I'm going to do more, more broadcasts like this because women of God get so much teachings. I'm going to start teaching for the man of God as well that you know how to protect your heart from fools, from people that mishandle you. That for the rest of your life, you only allow people to access you that know how to fear God. Only, only those are worthy from now on that you would have a standard. That you don't let anybody near to you as a man of God. If they are a disrespect to you. Only get around people that know how to talk to you. When I say get around them, I don't mean don't live your life. You're going to have to go places. You have to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm saying your inner circle, who you live with, who you eat with, who you drink with, who you, uh, when I say drink, uh, I'm saying you, you, you partake in of supper with. Only allow people in your inner circle that are fearing. And don't let your mercy kill you. Because mercy, as a man, you'll want people to have the best. You'll want people to be delivered. But if they are a dog, they're going to be a dog. A dog cannot sing praises to God. It can only bark. Exert your energy to people that energize God. Exert your energy to people that energizes God. Look for people that bring inspiration to the Father. The Father is pleased with them. One thing that you look for, you look for, how do people deal with the Holy Spirit? Can the Holy Spirit talk to them? Can the Holy Spirit correct them? Can the Holy Spirit give them advice? Can the Holy Spirit instruct them? Can the Holy Spirit lead them? Yeah, the Holy Spirit can lead me. The Holy Spirit can lead me. But what does it produce? Confusion? Trouble? War? Evil? Destruction? That's what the Holy Spirit does. It causes distraction. It causes so seeds of discord. You protect your garden. That God gives to you as a man of God. 
and don't let no snakes have access to your heart. You guard your heart. As a man of God, start living for people that truly want Jesus. Look for that. Look for people that truly want Jesus and start living for them. Live for them to experience the best of Jesus from you. Don't live for people that don't want Jesus. When you see that they don't want Jesus, pit them over to the sideline and start living your life for people that want Jesus. Give all your energy, your heart, into receiving the light of God, the wisdom of God for those that want Jesus. And you'll be safe. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray for the men of God across this world that every man of God would have the wisdom and understanding to know what is toxic and know what is helping him. Know what is destruction and know what is production. Know what is bringing him life and what is bringing him death. What is bondage and what is liberty. I pray that every man of God will see who they need to cut off, who they need to disconnect from. And Father, I say this in your presence, that they will see who they need to divorce. In Jesus' name. And Lord, every word that you had me speak on here, as I've said what you told me to say, I pray for every single man of God that from this moment forth, they themselves will learn the law for inspiration, that they will keep their inspiration guarded away from the presence of disrespectful people. I pray that the men of God will not be affected by persecution, that they would not be affected by this world or hatred, but that they will continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ.